Now, Tibet's Prime Minister in exile is making his first visit to Australia. Dr Lobsang Sangai is meeting politicians and students and will speak at the National Press Club on Tuesday and he is with us in the studio this morning. A very warm welcome to Australia. Well, thank you very much for the warm welcome because weather is quite cold here. <laughs> yes. We needed it. What are you hoping to achieve? This is, what, a week-long visit, so fairly short. What are you hoping to achieve out of it? Well, I'm going to from Melbourne to Canberra, Sydney, and a quick stopover in Brisbane to thank old friends and meet, uh, meet new friends, but also reach out to the government and the uh, public at large to inform them about the tragedy unfolding in Tibet. 42 cases of self-immolations where you know, 42 Tibetans have set themselves on fire, of which 30 plus have died, and the continuing repression, which ought to end so that's the main message I've uh, come here to convey. When it comes to your meetings or your attempts to influence the federal government, what stronger action would you like from the Australian government? Well, you know, uh, the Australian uh, foreign minister himself has said uh, to ask the uh, Australian ambassador in China to go to Tibetan areas where there has been uh, self-immolations to find out what exactly is going on so that the, you know, he could report to the Chinese government and the Australian government so that we could find a peaceful solution through dialogue to end the crisis in Tibet, which is a win-win proposition for both uh, Tibetan and Chinese people. You must find, though, with China now such a major trading partner for so many countries, so many countries almost dependent on China for economic growth. Do you, do you find governments around the world are, are sort of finding it difficult to provide you with the support you need, as well as balancing that relationship with China, when they make it so clear that they won't countenance any sort of form of independence for Tibet? Yes, I think there's some reluctance, and it's understandable. But uh, what we uh, often say and believe is that business rights is important, but human rights is equally important, because people of Australia fought for this principle of democracy and human rights, you know, and uh, the, the moral aspect of foreign relations. So as much as, you know, uh, that one should have business relationship with China, but human rights ought to be protected because otherwise, you know, we are not commodities that you can sell in the market. We're human beings, we have conscience, we have values, you know. So these are the things that the, uh, the Australian leaders and the international community ought to uh, uh, support because Tibetans have invested in democracy and nonviolence for the last many decades. If we are not supported, then essentially, uh, you know, uh, one is conveying the message that democracy and nonviolence are not worth investing. So that is a sad message, not for Tibetans, but for generally other marginalized groups around the world. You're, you're now out there advancing the interests of Tibetans. What role will the Dalai Lama now? Uh, take is he very much taking a back back seat uh, given uh, the the attempts to, to sway world opinion? Well, he he has always been in the front seat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so he is our most revered leader. He is a global statesman, you know, who advocates interfaith dialogue, compassion, peace, mm. nonviolence around the world. And as a Tibetan, he continues to speak for Tibet and Tibetan people. And I, my role is to provide political leadership and political voice uh, to the uh, Tibetan people, that has been his vision. And what we seek is middle way, which seeks genuine autonomy within China and within the framework of the Chinese constitution. So in that sense, you know, uh, it is also in the best interest of China. So that's the message I'm continuing to spread. And how difficult do you find your job being in exile in terms of trying to end some of these very difficult scenes, as you say, these, these tragic self-immolations that continue? Well, I think my job description is difficult. I think very difficult one. Um, but, you know, but I'm on the right side, I think. You know, there's a saying, the arc of justice is long, but it bent towards, uh, arc of history is long, but it bent towards justice. And I'm in the forefront of one of those, you know, uh, movements where uh, I'm trying to bend it towards justice. And I do believe it will bend towards justice and our day will come and with the help of people in Australia and the leaders of Australia. Dr. Lopsang Sangai, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Beverly. Thank, thank you, Michael. You.